G'day, not your witness here, back for another Gaiman breakdown video of him trying to do a breakdown video of us doing a breakdown video of him, part two. I do want to give a big shout out uh, and thank you to Peter from Gonna Go For It for doing up that fantastic intro video uh, that you just saw and also for my new logo. So thank you very much. If you haven't heard of Gonna Go For It, I'd highly recommend going and checking him out. He is involved in all sorts of fantastic things in the community, uh, and uh, he's, a, he's a main player, so make sure you have him subbed. In the interim, unfortunately, Dr. Guyman's channel has been deleted, so the links below will not work. This was quite a shock to all of us, not in the least Guyman himself. As far as I know, we are unsure why exactly it was deleted, but we all hope that he can get back on soon. Doc, if you need anything to help you get your channel back, by all means, get in touch with any of us. We'll be more than happy to help you out wherever we can. Anyway, the show must go on, so we are starting off with a lovely negative 610%. Hello! This is Dr. Gunman, and ow, my throat hurts from screaming at that laptop. <coughs> oh, it is 5.45. I've been trying to record part two for about <coughs> 45 minutes, but it keeps buffering and I have to keep <coughs> starting over. Ugh, I need water. Hell, I wish this bottle was filled. Okay. Ugh. Anyway, where we left off, um, the person who is writing uh, not his, uh, stuff, his responses, got angry because I called teachers, um, lazy. So, let's see what's about to happen. And the, uh, let's, before we begin, let's make sure the speakers work. Yep, the speakers work, it's at maximum everything. Let's continue. Just because you don't want to believe something doesn't make it unsubstantiated claim. This is another argument from incredulity, and as we said in the previous video, every time you make some argument from incredulity, it's a drinking game. Take a drink. Go, 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 go. Okay, first off, you are deducted 25% for your bad audio. You should have waited until you could use it again. Sloppy work will always result in bad grades. Since I am not able to hear the source material, I'm deducting 25% for the sloppy work. Now, as with the previous part, if I ever just say improper use of terms, it is for the argument from incredulity, and it is 10% for each one used. We last were at 60%, so this is 70% off for improper word use. That is 95% off, and you are now at negative 700 Claims are not unsubstantiated just because you say so. That's an argument from incredulity. Take a drink. Okay, improper use of terms, negative 80%. 
and 10% for presenting wrong and inaccurate information. See, I'm not saying it is unsubstantiated just because I don't like the claim. I said why it was that way. You made a baseless claim and it was wrong. So that is negative 90% in deductions. So you're now at negative 795%. <laughs> If we're failing a class, it's because our teachers didn't teach us how to answer the questions we got wrong. Writing on a board isn't very effective. I recommend slotted notes like the history teachers use. Okay, I have my notes typed up and available for download for all my students. I also bold the really important parts as well, such as names and dates. As I'm a history teacher, so yes, that style of notes do work, but you're trying to equate history to all other subjects, so that is 10% for a false equivocation fallacy. Also, sometimes board writing is the only way to teach. You ever take physics? You got a lot of the equations in that, so you have to write a lot on the board. It is the only way you can really teach that class, so you're at negative 805%. So it's wrong when I call a straw man, but it's not wrong when you call a straw man? This is hypocrisy. No, it is not hypocrisy. You are trying to make an argument that your teachers deny you medical emergencies. That is not something that teachers do, so you are trying to use an argument that discredits them and is easy to refute. That is a straw man. So no, 10% for presenting false and inaccurate information. Also, 20% for misrepresenting a source. But as for the strawman arguments, I would say if you want, I could just use an unsubstantiated claim deduction, but did not, as you were trying to paint teachers to look unreasonable. So that is 20%. So you now are at negative uh, 835%. You need to understand that time management is not the answer to all of life's problems. We can't plan every emergency that will ever come up. I never said time management was the be-all and end-all, but it would help you in the long run. Also, I understand that emergencies do happen and you cannot account for them. See, that is why we teachers understand this and are willing to work with you so you can make it through our classes successfully. So 10% for misrepresenting what I said in my comment. As I stated earlier, no teacher is going to get mad at you for an emergency, but you seem like the person who does need time management help. So you're at negative 845%. Then why does it keep us from accepting the finals? Okay, I have stated this one in part one and I will state it again here in part two. No student is allowed to exempt the finals, but if you had a valid emergency, you would be given a chance to make up the final you missed, thus allowing you to finish the class. I had a student who had a car accident and they were in the hospital during the finals. I made arrangements with them and they took it over the summer and passed the class. So 10% for using false and inaccurate information. So you're at negative 855%.
Oh, you know. Tom isn't my real name. Facebook just w wouldn't let me use the title of Dr. Guyman, so I had to make up a name and a Tom is just to be. Okay, I stand corrected. You are not Tom, but the way you used the name just so easily made it seem like that was your name. I am sorry for getting your name wrong. Eat a Snickers bar. You're not you when you're hungry. Then why do we get written up for laughing in class? You get written up for laughing in class as it is a distraction to the others who are trying to learn. You should know that you can't be disruptive in class. I have had to ask students to step out into the hall until they could control themselves. I've clarified this point already, so that is 10% for ignoring facts and evidence. You are at negative 865%. Not jar, quit crashing the video. You're already in his responses. If all teachers want to know is what's going on, ask what's going on. Don't ask us why we don't care as we try to make ends meet. I do ask what is going on. As I tell them, I notice that they're not themselves and I want to know what's going on. So yeah, 10% for presenting false and inaccurate information there, as you do not know what teachers do. Also, you talk about students trying to make ends meet, and well you, as I said, live in a nice looking cabin type house. So you do not know what you're talking about. I only have known one person who had to do that, and he was in my graduating class. He dropped out in his senior year and got his GED, so he could work full time to help provide for his family as his dad died and his mum could not work due to injuries, so he had to step up and take that role on. So what you're talking about is a very, very rare thing. So another 10% for false information. You are at negative 885%. People should not receive a failing grade just because they don't like the class. If someone doesn't like your class, there's a reason, and if you fix it, they will do better. I do not fail students who do not like my class. In fact, I know that there are students who hate history but got to be in my class. So nowhere did I say that the students who hate my class get bad grades. I said that the students who hate me tend to be the ones who I fail because they do not do their work. So they hate me for failing them. So that is 10% for misrepresenting a quote and 20% for misrepresenting a source. You are now at negative 915%. No, it's not unsubstantiated just because you, because you just said 
You do ask your students why they don't care. No, it is unsubstantiated because you did not give a teacher's name. And just saying the teacher said this and then painting it in a way that never happened is what made it unsubstantiated. So 10% for misrepresenting a quote. Yes, I have asked that, but I do in private, and that is because I'm trying to figure out what is going on. Also, 20% for failure to properly represent a source, as I gave you a detailed explanation as to why this claim is unsubstantiated. You are now at negative 945%. Really, laughing interferes with people's learning. 5% for an unsubstantiated claim. Yes, laughing does interfere with other people's ability to learn. You see, if you are doing it while I'm lecturing, then you are disrupting the lecture. You do it during free time and other students are doing work, then you're interfering with the student's ability to concentrate and finish their work on time. So yeah, 10% for presenting wrong and inaccurate information, and 10% for the baseless accusations that I made an unsubstantiated claim. So that puts you at negative 965%. This is not inaccurate. You just said that laughing is in fact banned in your class because it interferes with people's learning. Ugh. Nowhere did I say it was banned in my class. I said you could not laugh while I'm lecturing or if it becomes a distraction and interferes with the other students learning. So yeah, 20% presenting the same false and inaccurate information as shown in my previous point. But it is nice to see that you don't care about other students learning. You are at negative 985%. J simply saying that something is false and inaccurate is not enough to demonstrate that it's false and inaccurate. This is another argument from incredulity. Negative 90% for an improper use of terms. Now I will say that yes, I do stand by my points of view making a false and inaccurate statement. See, I am a teacher. I know why teachers do what they do. And if you're being disruptive, you get it attention, plain and simple. So that is 10% for shifting the burden of proof. You made the claim, so you have to prove it. See, I know you are wrong, because I'm a teacher. So your statement also is false and inaccurate. So another 10%. So you're now at a whopping negative 1,095%. I never thought I would see the day when you hit negative 1,000. Telling someone to stop laughing is the most cruel and inhumane thing you could ever do to someone. You are, it's, telling someone to stop laughing is denying a natural human emotion in exchange for despair. If I hear someone in real life say stop laughing, I'll smash his face in with a rock. Okay, so telling someone to stop laughing because it is disrupting class is not a violation of anything. 
you laughing is a violation of the other student's right to learn. You see nothing wrong with doing that. You try to claim that I'm violating someone's rights by denying an emotion. So if a student starts to get really out of hand and is really angry, I can't step in and tell them to calm down even though they're posing a threat to everyone in the room. Next, you also make threats. I really wish I knew which school you went to. As I would, as of right now, report you to your school officials, as you really do seem like you're posing a threat to not only the teachers who you hate so much, but also the students. You seem very violent. You need help, so please get it. But I will continue in my grading of you. So that is 10% for an unsubstantiated claim about denying human rights. 10% for presenting false and inaccurate information by stating telling someone not to disrupt class is inhumane. You see, if you are in my class, I expect you to behave a certain way. 10% for another unsubstantiated saying that not laughing causes despair. If that is what happens to you, Dr. Guyman, then you seriously need some psychiatric help, as that is not normal and you have an imbalance of something in your brain. I wish there was a way to take points off for violent threats, but sadly I cannot, as you just made a threat and not an actual problem I can take points from. If this paper did come across my desk and this threat was in the air, I would be reporting it to the school administration and recommending a suspension or expulsion. And from there, if the offence is bad enough, the proper authorities would be brought in. You lose 30%, you are at negative 1,125%. This shows a true disconnect between your heart and your student. You don't want to believe that we have been treated unfairly, so you call the claim unsubstantiated rather than speaking out about it or presenting any, uh, any physical evidence against it. In America, our teachers do tell us that passing their class is more important than food or water. And just because you yourself don't do that on your tiny little island in Timbuktu doesn't prove that students are not starving to death all over the world. This is another argument from incredulity. Take a drink! Grunk, 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 grunk. Negative 10% for an unsubstantiated claim. I cannot have a connection between my heart and my students as that would kill me if I did. Oh, you, you met the metaphorical type of connection? Well, I, I do care a lot about my students who I teach. See, that is why I became a teacher. Next 10% for another unsubstantiated claim. You state, I do not want to believe that you have been treated unfairly. Nowhere did I ever say that or imply it. 10% for presenting false and inaccurate information. I called the claim unsubstantiated because it was your claim, sorry, you claim your teachers said this. Would you mind providing a recording of them saying this? If your teacher did say this, they would be fired by now. If your teacher ever said that, I would support them losing their jobs. But you have to prove that they said that. You have yet to do that. Next, you pull a standard YEC type argument, which is a young earth creationist. So you get 20% for shifting the burden of proof, another 20% for moving the goalposts. See, this is the typical, well, I'm right and you're wrong, but you have to provide evidence I am wrong or I am right argument. That is the young earth creationists and flurfers use. So no, sorry, you made the claim, you need to back it up. It is not up to me to disprove what you say. You can't show it, you don't know it. Again, 20% for the same unsubstantiated claim from the video. 10% for presenting false and or inaccurate information. I'm in the United States. I will not say where, due to my safety and my job. 10% for an unsubstantiated claim that I am not from the United States. 
Next, we have 10% for moving the goalpost. You first say your teacher does this, and then you try and move the goalpost to the whole world. Yes, there are kids starving in other countries. It is a very sad thing to see, and it breaks my heart. But we're talking about the kids in your school. But if you want to talk about the kids worldwide, that is actually a good example of how your God is evil and immoral as he allows those kids to be born and to starve. But that is a topic for another day, and I'll, I'll let one of the other YouTubers who tackle those topics deal with it. Godless Iowan would be a good one to talk on that, or even Cirrus, I'm sure, could have his say in it. But next, we have the big grand deduction of 100% for improper use of terms. That is 220% off in deductions, so you are at negative 1,300 It's not inaccurate just because you say so. An argument for incredulity. Take a drink. Negative 10% for an unsubstantiated claim. I know it is inaccurate because I know how teaching works. Also, negative 110% for an improper use of terms. You are at negative 1,465%. The problem is, we live in a country where we're supposed to be guaranteed a voice, which means teachers that try to take that away from us are baby-shooting communists. Okay, 10% for an unsubstantiated claim that your rights are being violated, 20% for misrepresenting a source. You cite the First Amendment, yet you don't understand how your own rights are given. 10% for another unsubstantiated of you not being able to use your voice when you clearly are. So you can't disrupt class as you are then interfering with the rights of the other students. You see, your rights end where others begin. The other students have a right to a safe and productive learning environment which you clearly show you are not in favour of with your threats of violence and other hateful rhetoric. Next, you get 10% for improper word use with the use of communism as that is a political idea, not an insult. And 20% for insulting and violent language for the baby shooter comment. That puts you down to negative 1,535%. More commonly known as stating facts you don't want to believe, you're arguing from incredulity again. Take a drink. Okay, 10% for an unsubstantiated claim that I am just ignoring facts. Well, if you provide them, that would be great. You're just making baseless assertions. 120% for an improper use of terms. You are now at negative 1,665%. So I got bad grades because the teachers disagree with me? That made me want- that just makes me want to ban teachers even more, right? 20% for misrepresenting a source. I said you got bad grades because you were wrong, not because the teachers disagree with you. I have a student who I do not agree with politically or religiously. 
but he was one of the few A students I had. So now you want to ban teachers all because you have a few that give you a bad grade? Oh, well, sorry if this seems uncaring, but cry me a river. The big bad cruel world is a lot harsher than you think, and you're in for a rude awakening if you think your teachers are bad. Next, you'll get 10% for presenting false and inaccurate information. You cannot ban teachers. Sorry, that will never happen. So you are now at negative 1,695%. No, it's fine. Th this is the first time you grade the video of mine. I'm not, I'm not angry at you. I'm angry at the actual teachers. Ten percent for presenting false and inaccurate information. I have graded multiple videos of yours in the comments section, so you are now at negative one thousand seven hundred and five percent. There's nothing wrong with calling me out if you think I made a mistake. Uh, if you do want to email, uh, mine is ianaddison2 at gmail.com. Alright, so again, screencast dramatically over the course 15 minutes, and we're at 14 minutes and 55 seconds. We're, we're basically at 15 minutes. See ya. So, you're finishing this part two with a grand total of negative 1,705%. I guess we'll see what part three has in store for us. So, I really hope Diamond returns to YouTube. I will hold on to these original source videos of his for a while. If you need them for your own copies or to re-upload, Doc, I'm more than happy sharing them back to you. So make sure to leave any of your thoughts in the comments section below. If you agree, disagree, or wish to correct me, feel free. Plus, if you have any other topics you want me to cover or dig deeper into, just leave your suggestions down there too. I am on the Facebook and the Twitter machine at Notjar Witness if you wanted to get in touch with me there. And if you would like to see more on the JWs or other religious beliefs as I do what I can to expose and refute them where I can, please hit that like button and subscribe. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for watching and remember, I'm Notjar Witness. All I wanna do is laugh